Good afternoon and welcome to Hot Issues. There have been calls within the ranks of the ruling New Patriotic Party for uh, MPs in some constituencies in its stronghold to go unopposed to better the chances of the party uh, come 2020. Many have described this call that comes from the uh, regional chairman as undemocratic. Today I have with me one of the founding fathers of the New Patriotic Party and former school feeding program head, Dr. Amwako Tufo, joining us on Hot Issues. Uh, good afternoon, sir. It's, it's a privilege to have you uh, join us on Hot Issues and we're happy to uh, be in your space. You have been so uh, described as uh, pretty controversial uh, because you say it as it is. What do you make of the current voters' register, the same which brought into power the sitting president, Nana Akufuado? Do you get a sense that it is flawed and needs to be changed? Personally, I believe so. But we must show respect to people of state employed by the state to do specific jobs. If the electoral commissioner in her wisdom has gone through the whole process and found that the, ne the need to change the register is there, we must adhere to it. We must respect that kind of thing. This country is full of too many people criticizing every policy but, that But the agitations up. have come up because there are suggestions that the electoral commission chairperson's posturing has been a bit uh, too aggressive, uh, sending off the impression that she is not ready or the institution is not ready to speak to anyone, to consult anyone. Oh, I, I don't think basically that would be the issue. But what I wonder about is why are people so rigid about not changing the register. But why shouldn't what they? What was it loaded before? Why shouldn't they? Why shouldn't they have agitations and concerns? Oh, no, no, that no, no, no. But this is a democratic it's country. It's not being transparent enough. No. This is a democratic country. Everybody, anybody can agitate to express his or her opinion. What I'm trying to say here and now is that some of us, I was a bit worried about the register before because there were lots of people that came from neighboring countries that flawed the register. And I was aware of uh, quite a number of them, you see. So the register as it stood, if it had gone through the whole cycle, and there are a few things I cannot say here, if, in her opinion, it has to be changed, it has been changed before, so there's no news. If she has the funds to do it, people are saying, ah, the funds should be used for roads and all that. Sure, you have so many But doesn't, alternative doesn't uses the fact of, that the 21 eminent persons advisory committee within the EC itself recommending that the EC should go back to meet IPAC and start consultations itself suggests that the EC started all of these from the wrong footing without doing the relevant consultations that are necessary to bring harmony, to get everybody agree with her on this position. I'm very you don't certain think that she no. erred or the institution erred in the process. I don't to start know with. all the details there as to what happened. I mm. don't belong to IPARC or all those mm. areas, so I can't talk fully for them. What I know about Jean Mensa is she is a very objective person. Very firm. Very fair. The end is he has described her as sometimes too bullish and uh, pushes off some oh, of their Oh, it's about concerns. time some women I mean, became in bullish. In relation you know? to the relationship the party had with her from the time of the IEA, there are many who say that this has festered a certain uh, uh, arena of mistrust for her and her leadership. You think that's what the problem is? I don't think so. I think they're exaggerating. We must allow her to come through with her program. You disagree? Sure, express your opinion. Mm. Those who also agree are also there. Where do you draw the line? Some want it, some don't. Leave it to the authority to decide and move us on. This is not the only thing that should be worrying us as a country. Unless people are worried about rigging and stuff like that and have all but these shouldn't funny they be ideas. Worried? Shouldn't they, they should be. be about Just like rigging. I was worried in 2016. Because 2016, you, you had Reagan, a lot of people who came from... Your party won the elections. That should, should be a consolation. Well, taking the, part, the power from 
an incumbent government is not a simple thing. But it was with the same register, ah, that's the point. No. There were other things that happened. Did you look at the dynamics of the day? People were not even worried about the results coming from the regions. We had done thorough, fast work to make sure that we had the figures right. And the figures that were flowing from some other places were not reasonable enough. Okay, we were very lucky, and I thank God that in the you final mean there analysis, were, there were indications that the outcome of the election could have been changed if uh, you went ahead to pull full trust in the then voters register, then electoral commissioner. Ah, so the problem is not the, 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 the institution, and the problem is not the register. It's the person who is leading it. At that point in time, you were asking me what I thought. It's not always the, uh, the commissioner who is at fault, no. But I didn't like also the rigidity of the previous uh, commissioner. Same rigidity this, this commissioner is exhibiting. Fair enough. But she had her way, and finally she declared her results. And nobody would attack her on that. Same thing here, Jean Mensah, from my year, I had a lot of respect for her. Very straight, very strict, to the point. Very firm, very rigid. Very firm. I think it's, it's one of the things we must admire her for, as a woman in our system. We need a lot of women who are tough and, 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 and principled. And uh, I don't think all the noises is, are going to make any difference. So the MPP's position is that whether or not the consultations go on, whether or not the Electoral Commission meets with the IPAC and other stakeholders who have expressed uh, disagreement with the compilation of the a new voters register, nothing really is going to change because the EC gets its authority from Article 45 of the Constitution and it is non-negotiable. Is that the position of the MPP? No, that is the position of the country we have in our constitution and in the regulations, rules and regulations, guiding electoral processes. So I get the sense that the recommendations by the eminent advisory committee is just window dressing? No, you can always advise. That doesn't mean people should take it. Okay? You go and have a new meeting now. You will have a group that will say yes. You have a group that will say no. You look at the, what the rules are, and the leadership should give it direction. And she's giving it the direction that the country deserves to have. You're confident based that based on this, if we're, she decided, we're definitely going to have a new vote. If she register, decided, irrespective of consultations. If she decided there was not going to be any new voters register, the way I know and respect her, I would have accepted it. Now, same person is saying, no, on my study, on my this and that, we must change the register. And I'll go with her. There are those that. who say you, perhaps. You know, there is even a third toy, uh, uh, thought School in my mind. Thought. School of thought. You know, and I don't want to confuse the, the arithmetic. We started a new national ID in future. We may want to encourage it so that it's done properly for But Canadians. the national identification is nowhere near foolproof because banks and other institutions are not accepting for now. And it's far I away know. from being ready to be used no, as I'm saying uh, that data for if elections. There are other countries that when you have an ID of that country, that is your actual ID. That's your trump card to yes. everything. I mean, if you go to the States, for when I was insurance. a student there, Five two one one four eight four one four six six. That's my social security number. It remains so till now. Yes, they punch it. All my details are there. As a student from sixty eight or 60, yeah, thereabouts. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I keep that number. You go there as an old student, as an old professional. There, you give. Why so, should so that work and is that, it cannot work here? Your thinking is that as a country, we should be thinking about migrating ourselves to this point where yes. the national ID will be the ID for everything. The Why should we ID have for two IDs, one for voting, one for this? Eventually it becomes expensive. One for social security. 
One for health insurance. Once you have one for your passport. One, and you have it put into a system, like I told you, mm. you go in. There was a time I went to the States. I had come back as, as a professor to teach here, and I went back. I had changed my name from Samuel Tufour to Kwame Amwaku Tufour. So I went to the States on my uh, checkbook. I, 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 I had written the ID I wrote, Kwame Amwaku Tufour. They rejected it. They said, what's your date of birth? And then I said that, your name is Samuel. And it was true. I wasn't trying to uh, go this way or that way. My new name was there. And I always carried my name that I changed in the daily graphic with me. Mm. And it, it works perfectly. Mm. I'm saying certain systems work. Mm. So if they do, in future, we can sit and study, know the flaws of the national ID, know how we can better it. And then once you are a citizen and you get that card, you can be permanently identified mm. and that is it and if you have confidence in the system let, absolutely let me backtrack a little bit to all of these election issues there are those who say that the mpp's posturing in strongly supporting the ac to compile a new voter register suggests that your party is agitated that you possibly might not win the 2020 election the impudence <laughs> of a dying cockroach is not that what it is no i would have preferred the statement to to refer to our opponents. They are dying. If you are not confident enough, everything that comes your way is a problem. You understand? We believe we are winning the elections. We believe we put certain structures in place. We believe that as we are moving to December, we're going to put certain activities and certain things in place that will make us win. Our opponents are watching us. You move to A, they want to move to B. Because they are not confident enough. What is wrong with uh, electoral commissioner taking a, p a position on this? They have experienced it before. We wanted to change it previous time. And there were all kinds of agitations and all that. We went ahead and the electoral commissioner will always have his way. I remember Aban and uh, what's the old man's name? Uh, it, not Yenoku. Um, I can't remember it. Bushy hair, and he had this cat that we used to call Five Five. You see, in our young days, he was an electoral commissioner. They chased him out of office and all that. Electoral commission in this country. They've suffered. Aban and Kinsley Nina, I think it's Kinsley Nina. They all suffered. They make a statement here, yeah, this party wants this and all that. It's about time we shut up. Your view is that and the, let, the us, let systems work. Your view yes. is that the electoral commissioner should put her feet firmly on Absolutely the ground. Absolutely down. And if shut I all meet the critics down. That lady and her foot is not that I will go and dig a hole and, and mm, push, it, push it down. First. Dr. Marco Tufo is my guest on Hot Issues. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back. Please stay. Welcome back to Hot Issues. I still have in the hot seat Dr. Amako Tufo. So there have been calls by the regional, uh, the regional chairman of your party, the MPP in the Ashanti regions, to have some constituency MPs go on a post to better your chances in the 2020 elections. What would have thought that as a stronghold of your party, such a call will not come forward and that you will allow the will of the people through a democratic process to elect who they want to become their member of parliament. What's your thoughts on this? I'll start from the last statement you made. This NPP is a democratic party. We are not going to act as if it's a dictatorial party. We can't. But there are individual wishes. Mm. Somebody goes to parliament, he talks two, three times, he feels he's a champ. He's doing his bit, fine. 
what we should do in future is to make sure that we have representatives from parliament, like uh, the head of our parliamentary caucus, uh, maybe the chief whip, whatever. Those are representatives. Then a representative from National Council of the Party, a representative from National Executive of the Party, then representative of the elders of the party, and then neck of the party. And then, of course, you need a representative from the presidential office. They should meet and discuss that in parliament today, these are the august there. These people are bettering our fortunes in parliament. They talk on issues, they are brilliant, they're moving us forward. It will be some kind of protectionism if you put this into practice, would no, you think no, so? No, I'm moving to the main issue now. Mm. There are some people who may be good. You go to the constituency that there is Kofi Inti who wants to compete with this particular person that is doing very well in parliament. And you discuss with Kofi Inti. He says, no, I won't step down for him. Then you go to step two. Uh, can we possibly give you position as a DC or as an MP, as a deputy minister or whatever? I mean, negotiate. I believe in the jaw jaw business because that person who is competing with this person from parliament may have his own ambition and so does everybody have the right to be ambitious. You cannot cut off somebody's ambition. You did not give birth to him. You did not look after him in school. You don't know what his special... But you're suggesting you can manipulate the ambition or curtail it you to, to satisfy the, ambition. the party's You discuss position. the ambition. Some people may say, okay, I've spent two CDs on my campaign or my uh, maneuvering. So sort me out. You can sort him out and also top it up. It's all negotiation. Give him an offer he can refuse. And this is democratic? That is democratic, yes. You discuss. I come to you. I want something from you. You don't want to give it. I say, look, I want to buy it. There are people in this country who go to a place where people are selling houses. And uh, they don't want to sell to you. Say 100,000. No. I will give you 200,000. He jumps at it. That is not undemocratic. That is negotiation so that both sides are happy with the decision. If you don't do these things, that person, that Kofi man, may go independent. It will hurt the party. Because an MPP guy is going independent, and another M MPP guy from parliament is also going against an NDC. NDC well, why all these maneuverings if the parties? confident of winning the 2020 elections and hang on he, we're he, talking about your strongest, beings are your, your, your strongest area yes you see you have too many good people coming from the region that are politically sound and able okay but also we must also understand that some of these people just don't spring up because uh, they, they want to be ambitious some of the MPs don't do very well with their people. We must be very honest and frank. That's what I, I get criticized about, but I'm not going to change being honest, frank, and to the point by pleasing people who just want to be unfair. The whole process must remain So you think the rank fair. and file of your party, the grassroots, basically the foot soldiers, to get along and accept that there are times and some positions need to be preserved and protected, that some of the MPs can go without being contested? It is no problem is not Congress. coming from the grassroots. Grassroots decide that you are coming. You want to come in. We want this MP. They decide by voting. But it's the top. The guy at the, uh, uh, in parliament or somebody that is trying to protect his interest, that is forging. You can't stand against him, you see. And that becomes very unfair, especially to the grassroots and the other trodding of the party. That is where they stand up and say, no, let's go 
and have the primaries. This is the best thing to do. Doc, let me quote MP for Bantama, Daniel Ochem Abuaji. He says, if I'd known I wouldn't have unseated Kokofu, he's currently begging to go again, and I continue unfinished business. You get the sense that several members of your uh, MPs of your party uh, have not been able to finish their business, getting to the four-year term. That you, possibly you because of years, over ambitious you... promises of your party, they feel pressed? No. If you are sent there for four years, you must know you are there for four years. There are certain things you must do. Go back to your constituency, chit chat with them. What can you do to help Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C? But I'm this, that, that. What can't you do? Be fair on them. They sent you there so that you can also assist them. But there are some people who don't talk to their constituents. They, they see you and say, oh, oh, hello, hello. oh, oh my busy. I'll, I'll see you later. Okay. He comes. He has a new 4x4. Four by, uh, four by four. The smart MPs will say, oh, Cratchy, where are you going? Oh, the, oh let me drop it. Drop, drop. No, uh, 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 how is everything? Acting as the people's servant. That's sometimes not, not being acting seen as uh, acting pretense. as if pretends. No, there are some people who are genuine. Mm. If you know the kind of following I have with the people, yeah, you'll be surprised. I get calls at two a.m., three a.m. Doctor Media call me to me and say, "Why are you? Why are you talking?" I said, "Ah, I mean, here, Juma. I work with you this place, that place." So, oh, sir, okay. Why don't you call me at eight o'clock and on? Then he calls 7.45, because maybe 8 o'clock, I'll be dodging or something. You have to allow the person to come close to you. I can tell you that my work itself, doing A, B, C, D for myself, it's almost kaput, because you, when you are in these type of positions... You have to acknowledge that you're not there to, for yourself alone. Exactly, you have to do things for the people. Now, if you don't do it, and then you come to him and you still want to go to parliament. How dare but you? But there are many of your, your fan base, your supporters in the Ashanti region in particular, who have been engaging on uh, agitations, demonstrations, dissatisfaction with your government. Well, the MPP administration, you are not part, you are not winning government. It's fair to just refer to your party. But what would you say has been the biggest achievement of the Nanado administration in the Ashanti region, your stronghold, because they are not happy. No. You are reading the arithmetic wrongly. They are happy about lots of issues. What they are not happy about, they voice it out. Mm. One of them is this business of uh, some MPs trying to force their way through. There are so many problems that crop up in a person's four-year life. You come in, there are so many constituencies that need roads to be fixed. You certainly can't lobby for all of them to all be done. All of them, but they will, especially in Ashanti, they are very open, very bold with their statements and all that, they'll come out, okay? But the, there is a limit to what the government can do in any period of time. What it calls for is for the party and the people to engage the individuals in the constituency. That is where that MP comes in also. When there's an agitation in your constituency, it means you are not doing very well. You go to them. You explain matters to them. They will understand you. But you don't see them. Hey, this road is, is a problem for us. When it floods, when it rains, it floods badly. And so you're suggesting that the MPP administration has not necessarily abandoned its stronghold, the Ashanti region. It cannot and abandon quite a the lot stronghold. Of things have gone on. It cannot abandon the, the stronghold. We are still very firm there. There are differences of opinion here and there. If you're in a system, you cannot entertain people with different opinions. Then you are, you, you are not working right. In NPP, in Nashanti, where the people are, are, are free to talk, their, speak their mind, you expect that. That doesn't mean they're changing their positions. They will vote positively. It doesn't mean they have a change of mind for voting. No, 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 no. And it, possibly might be thinking about bringing back John Mahama? No. What may happen 
is that when a typical MPP is disgruntled, you don't listen to him. The talk on the ground is that we could vote to cry, I won't vote. But for him to say, I'll go and vote for John Mahama is out. You don't think most of them you don't think not John do Mahama uh, appears a little more credible now in the eyes of uh, some of your supporters and the rest of Ghanaians over how the MPP has managed the economy up to today? John Mahama may be appealing to N NDC. But not appealing to MPP and to the floating MPP, masses? No. Why? Because the records are there. The kinds of things they couldn't do are also there. We have to articulate it better and properly to the people. I don't think our communication people are doing the best job they can do. But with time, we have few months, they will come through and make sure we explain the, the problems that are there. You think their propaganda all, mechanisms oh, are not absolutely. intense enough? absolutely. FDC, you must respect them for their propaganda mechanisms. No, I, I mean I the MPP. You think your propaganda mechanisms are not intense enough as it, when, that we're not hearing what your party or your government when, when, is doing? When you say... Uh, propaganda mechanism in MPP, some people may look at you funny because that word... Because it doesn't happen? It happens within a the lot. MPP? No, no, I agree with you. It happens a lot. But you see, MPP, I, you, you wonder where these two party people came from. They are all Ghanaians. NDC understands propaganda machinery. Better than MPP? Be better than MPP, yes. Let's to be at, honest with you. Let's look at the school feeding program. There are quite a number of things I would like to uh, talk about from your government's uh, achievement. Uh, the president has rated your party's uh, performance in government to 72% against the norm uh, by civil society groups who say that uh, you've achieved your party's manifesto by 48%. But that aside, let's take key sectors. Let's take, for example, school feeding program because you were the founder of school feeding program and you run it. Looking back, do you get the sense that uh, the school feeding program has gone the way you anticipated at the founding stage? No. Um, lots of problems cropped up. It was not meant to be a political issue. We must first understand why did I fight so hard to bring it to this country. As a child, when I was a child, I was quite hungry. And to, to solve those problems, I had to sell graphic and sell bread mm -hmm. before I go to classroom. Yeah. You see. We all did at a point. Yeah. And you see, you see those young ones, as I grew up, I could see the little ones very hungry. Mm -hmm. I'd stop a car and buy some rice or watch it for the way they would eat. It started. So you come up with school feeding. When I was introduced it, I did not sit back. I worked to make sure it worked. Now, the first rule of thumb is that it is not political. That child that is going to school is neither MPP nor NDC. He's a Ghanaian. If you lose that spirit, that it has to be a Ghanaian, the mentality should be you are feeding a Ghanaian, then you miss it. As time went on, especially when NDC took over, became very political because they thought even the cooks, the caterers, when people, they started sucking them on mass. In my time, you come in, I won't ask you where you're coming from. Caterer, no. Because the conditions to be a good caterer is that, do you have a clean place to, to cook? The food should be basically Ghanaian, 100% Ghanaian, locally uh, uh, produced food, hot meal a day. Most Ghanaian women can do that. But you go back to where they are going to cook from, the sanitation, the water supply there, how the woman and make sure that the it. environment meets a certain Those standard. Those are the conditions. 
and then you have a monitoring and evaluation. So do you group. think that the previous NDC administration ran down the program and they your did. party has had the opportunity they did because, to, you see, to, to, to when, resurrect the program for, for almost four years? Oh, yeah. And there's still protests from agitations, from unpaid uh, caterers who, who still picket and demand the money so okay. they need to be paid them. Let me explain to you. At the time we were leaving office, just before then, had come up with a program that every caterer should have a bank account. The bank manager will know that eventually the payment will be made into this account. So if the woman wants an advanced cash to go and buy food and all that kind of thing, it should be this way. Don't get, send the money to the DCEs. Don't send the money to this because the DCEs and was, I'm, and I'm, was, I'm not and was shy that, about this. Was that, that, they would, was that they, done? No, I'm coming to that. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, some DCs were very funny. They would touch the woman's waist and say, you don't have any beats there. Why? It's foolish stuff like that. But it is also Ghanaian in parts. Let's be honest. So to cut all those things off, let's send the money to the bank instead of through the district assembly to the thing. Now, when we left office, the system reverted. To, to and the took the money back to the DCs. And, and things were and then the whole started thing going started down. Like and then you see, instead of respecting the coordinator who is handling it, a DC will go and increase the number of schools on his own. You know, lack the discipline. So that's corruption. Well, you are, you are telling as my opponent is, was corrupt, okay, I accept it. Doc, let's wrap up uh, one very important question before we go. Election 2020 is here, and then Akufuado hasn't told us whether he is not contesting, so we have no doubt about that. But who do you think should be uh, the replacement for Nana Akufuado after he's finished his term? <laughs> you know I'm laughing? You're asking the man who is part of making the rules. If I come out and say Mr. A or Mr. B, then I must put my head on the chopping board. What I can tell you is that Nanado is going to run. We are getting ready at all corners to make sure that the good policies is brought, the implementations of these, the effect on the population, the future expectations of the people will be met. Now, the system evolves in such a way that the new leaders come automatically. We have eyes. We know the potentials. But right now, if I give it to you, you know, it's like the royal kingdom. If you say this man is going to be the king tomorrow, they start poisoning him small, small. And then he'll be down before his death. That's right. We're grateful for your time. So nice to meet you.